right, Shalom. Give it all praise to the Most High Yah by Shem Shah, by Shem Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hopefully elect out there. This is your brother, Atazawan Bayal. I'm going to bring a short lesson. And um, time and time again, we find ourselves doing these types of lessons, right? Almost on a weekly, almost on a weekly basis. Um, so this lesson is going to be based on this short article here where it reads, three teens dead, one critically, so like a one critical and in shooting at Texas gas station. Now this shooting happened uh, yesterday in a town called Garland, which is pretty close to Dallas. All right, we'll read this article, get a few scriptures and, and, and shut it down um, because, you know, we go through this, like I said, almost on a weekly basis now. And, uh, for those out there, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, if by what you're seeing on a weekly basis with all of these deaths across the world in various numerous different ways, if you're not in fear of the Lord, I don't know what else to tell you, okay? Um, many of the prophets, many of the brothers have... have have already given warning that this type of activity is going to continue. It's going to get, it's going to be more in number, right? It's going to happen more frequently because the Lord, the Most High, Yahweh Shem Yahweh is fed up with this place, okay? And you're going to see more what appears to be random acts of uh, people losing their lives in various ways, okay? So let's get right to the article and uh, go through the scriptures and we'll be done um, at least for today, right? Because who knows what tomorrow is going to bring if we make it, right? If we see tomorrow. But this this right here is, is um, is the Lord operating, okay? And these young people, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm at a, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Let's get, let's get in the article here. All right, it reads. Um, this is from Associated Press, Garland, Texas. Three teenagers, okay, three teenagers, young people, were killed and a fourth were critically wounded when another teen shot them at a gas station in in the Dallas area over the holiday weekend. Police said on Monday. And we scroll down, and I'm not going to do the whole article, but we'll get we'll get the meat of the article and then hit the scriptures. Going on, it says, uh, the shooting happened Sunday night in the Dallas sub suburb of Garland and was captured on surveillance video, the Garland Police Department said. Investigators are still trying to determine a motive. So at this particular point, they don't even know what brought this about, right? Garland Police Chief Jeff Bryan said a 14-year-old boy who investigators believe is the shooter was arrested Monday afternoon in surveillance video police showed during a news conference. A shirtless boy or man could be seen crouching while walking towards the store and carrying a handgun. He swings open the door and starts shooting into the store from the doorway. Police said he fired more than 20 rounds from a 40 caliber pistol. Authorities did not name the suspect, suspected shooter who was wearing a baseball hat, blue surgical mask, and dark colored athletic shorts. They said he got into a white Dodge Ram pickup with a scrape, with a scrape along much of the passenger side and someone else drove him away. Okay, so as of right now, I'm not even going to go into the uh, the interview with the police, okay, but they don't understand, apparently, uh, why this young man did what he did, but it sounds like some youthful activity, some gang maybe possible activity, we don't know. Okay, police said they were looking for the person who was driving the pickup truck. 
And oftentimes, you know, Jake, Jake involved with all that kind of stuff, especially when they may be gang affiliated of some type, you know, they'll find a real young person to do the dirt for them because they can't be charged uh, as harshly as an adult maybe. But uh, right now, that's all speculation. We don't know. We just know that the Lord is busy in the earth, okay? And that's all that really needs to be brought out. That's all that really needs to be said. So if you want to go out there and see this, uh, read about it, um, I'll try to put the uh, link in the description box if I can remember. Most of the time, I don't remember to do that, but I'll try and remember. Or you can uh, pull it up and look at it yourself and read the read the report on it. Okay, so let's get into some scriptures here, and uh, I think I'm gonna hit this a little bit differently than I normally would. Um, and we're we're just gonna look at Job. We'll go to Job one and start right there at 18. Now this is for those who know about the prophet Job. You know uh, how the Lord put them put him through his tests and his, and his trials, okay? Uh, but in this, this portion that we're going to read, we'll see how the Lord is in control of all things, including life and death, okay? So this is Job 1 and 18, and it reads, While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons... And thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they are, they are dead, Salakia. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I into the in Salakia. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahushai, gave, and the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahushai, hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord Yahweh. So here, Job, even as a righteous man, okay, he knows that it is the Lord that gives. And it is the Lord that takes away. Okay. Now, typically we go into our usual scriptures, but I wanted to show a different side of this. But still getting to the point that if, when any man leaves this planet, you better believe it was the Most High that gave the order to do so. However way he chose to do it, you know, the Lord brings judgment. Okay. Go over to Samuel, and we'll read a little bit of Samuel, 1 Samuel 2, and we'll start right there, verse 6. And what does it say? It says, The Lord, Yahweh, Shem Yahushua, killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make their inherit and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. You see that? So the Lord does all things. Okay, we make this point continually so that those of you out there who have not repented, you will find that through the Spirit, you get this fear of the Lord. Okay? That fear of the Lord is what you need at this point in time. You need to repent, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans out there. The Lord is not playing around. Verse 10 the adversaries of the Lord. Now the Lord has adversaries. Now you need to know or you need to decide are you an adversary? Okay. Are you part of the wicked? Or are you trying to be through the spirit anyway a saint of the Lord? Right? 
a repentant soul. Okay? Because the Lord does have adversaries and he's going to bring a recompense to all his adversaries. Those of the nation of Israel and then those of the other nations. Okay? Verse 10 again, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall a thunder, shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Now, of course, that's going in, okay, to our Savior. But the point being that the Lord has adversaries, that the Lord will break them in pieces, that the Lord killeth and he maketh alive, that the Lord bringeth a man up and he bringeth them low and so forth. Deuteronomy 30, 32 and 39, as always, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. That's the most high. You see? So all of you out there, you watch this video, and you haven't repented. You better repent because the Lord is opening up, okay? This is Ecclesiasticus 5 and 7 out of the Apocrypha, and it reads, make no tarrying, right? Don't waste any time. Don't delay, okay? Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. And put not all from day to day, for suddenly, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And the Lord is beginning to open up and carry out his vengeance against his adversaries. Okay? As it reads, three teenagers were killed who killed them the most high and a fourth was was critically wounded who wounds the most high okay so bear that in mind while you go out there in your day-to-day -day walk okay you don't know when will be the last day so it's our job to persuade men Okay, to understand and know the terror of the Lord. With that, I'm in the lesson right there. I'm giving all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, great millstone. Shalom to the hopefully elect. See you on another lesson real soon. Shalom.